Hello and welcome back to Mystify, your go-to destination for mystery sci-fi movie recaps. Today we're diving into another exciting film called Vivarium. Before we begin, I want to remind you that this video may contain spoilers. Without further ado, let's head straight to the story. The film begins by depicting the parasitic life cycle of cuckoos, which involves laying eggs in the nests of other birds. Once hatched, the cuckoo displaces the young of the mother bird and is cared for by the surrogate parent. The clip ends with the cuckoo growing significantly larger than the mother bird and consuming all of her resources. Gemma is a primary school teacher and her boyfriend Tom is a handyman. The young couple is looking to purchase a house and encounters a strange real estate agent named Martin, who introduces them to a new development called Yonder. The couple is hesitant at first but agrees to drive out to the development with Martin out of politeness. They see that the houses are identical suburban homes. The place is silent, empty, and otherworldly. Martin shows the couple house number 9 and shows them around inside. He asks them to follow him to the backyard and then vanishes. They go outside and find that Martin's car is missing. Gemma and Tom attempt to leave yonder but become lost. Every route returns them to house number 9. It's now evening and the car runs out of fuel so they decide to stay the night in house number 9. The next morning, Tom climbs onto the roof to see if he can spot a way out of yonder. As he scanned the horizon, he sees that the houses of yonder seem to stretch into infinity. Desperate for a way out, Tom and Gemma decided to follow the artificial-looking sun, hoping that it would lead them to the edge of yonder and back to civilization. But no matter how far they walked or which direction they took, they always ended up back at number 9, their starting point. They discovered a delivery box outside their front door. Inside, they found pre-packed food and other necessities, as if they were being watched and provided for by some unseen force. Tom's frustration and anger boiled over, and he decided to set the house ablaze in the hopes that the smoke and flames would attract the attention of someone who could help them. As the flames engulfed the house, Tom and Gemma fell into a deep sleep. They wake up and see that the house is rebuilt and find an infant in a box with an instruction saying raise the child and be released. As time passed, the infant in the box that Tom and Gemma found grew at an alarming rate. Within three months, the tiny newborn had transformed into a seven-year-old boy with an unnerving, adult-like voice that imitated every word and action of the couple. The boy demanded constant attention from Tom and Gemma, throwing tantrums and emitting ear-piercing shrieks when his needs were not met. He spent most of his days glued to the television, fixated on the strange patterns that flickered across the screen. Living with the boy in yonder took a significant psychological toll on Tom and Gemma. They were trapped in a strange, artificial world with no way out, and the constant demands of the boy added to their stress and anxiety. Their physical health also began to deteriorate. One day, Tom throws his cigarette on the grass and discovers something unusual about the soil of yonder. Upon closer inspection, he realized that it was made from a seemingly artificial substance. He became obsessed with the idea of digging, feeling that it was his only sense of purpose in this strange, confining world. The digging started off as a distraction, a way to keep his mind occupied, but it soon turned into an all-consuming obsession. As Tom dug deeper and deeper into the earth, he started to hear strange noises coming from the bottom of the hole. The sounds were barely audible at first, but they grew louder and more distinct as he continued to dig. Tom's physical and mental health continues to deteriorate, and he becomes increasingly desperate to escape yonder. He becomes convinced that the only way out is to kill the boy, who seems to be the source of their captivity. He locks the boy in the car, hoping that their captors will come to retrieve him or that he will starve to death. However, Gemma intervenes and prevents Tom from carrying out his plan. She attempts to bond with the boy, hoping to glean some insight into their captivity from him. 
She discovers that he is incapable of imagining things or dreaming, and seems to have no capacity for empathy or emotional connection. Tom's growing emotional distance from Gemma pushes her closer to the boy. She begins to see him as a kind of surrogate child, and finds herself becoming increasingly protective of him. One day, the boy disappears without warning. Gemma searches frantically for him, but he is nowhere to be found. He reappears, carrying a strange textbook in an unknown language. The book is filled with illustrations of humanoid beings with large throat sacs, and Gemma is mystified by its contents. She asks the boy where he got the book, but the boy says he is not allowed to tell. She tricks him by playing pretend and asks him to pretend to be the one who gave him the book. The boy responds by inflating his throat sacs and making strange alien sounds. Terrified, Gemma realizes the boy is not from this world, and Yonder may be part of an otherworldly scheme. As time passed, the boy they had once raised has grown into a terrifying figure, one they both fear and loathe. He leaves the house each day, disappearing into the seemingly endless streets of Yonder, and Gemma begins to wonder what he does or who he sees when he is gone. Eventually, the grown-up boy locked them out permanently as they have served their purpose of raising him. Despite their fears, Tom continues to dig, driven by a need to find some kind of escape or explanation. One day, he makes a gruesome discovery, a body bag containing a withered corpse. The shock of this realization is too much for Tom, and he succumbs to the physical and mental stress of living in Yonder. He later dies in Gemma's arms, reflecting on their life together. The boy approaches later with a body bag, sealing Tom's body inside and dumping him into the hole. The next morning, a vengeful Gemma attempts to kill the boy with Tom's pickaxe, but she only manages to injure him. Hissing and crawling like an insect, he flees into a bizarre pocket underneath the curb. Gemma follows him, tumbling into a strange and terrifying pocket of parallel homes. Here, she witnesses the lives of other young couples trapped in a similar despair to her own, adding to her sense of hopelessness and isolation. Eventually, Gemma is spat back out into house number 9, alone and more lost than ever before. The boy finds her and explains that a mother's purpose is to raise a child and then die. As he seals her in a body bag, Gemma tells him that she is not his effin' mother, and then dies. The boy buries her in the same hole he buried Tom. He takes the couple's car and leaves yonder. Back in the real estate office, an old Martin gives him his nameplate and dies. The new Martin gets a body bag and rolls up his predecessor's body and places it into a filing cabinet and assumes his new position. A new couple walks into the office and Martin rises and greets them with an eerie smile. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you never miss a new release. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.